As we have stated in our last video, Bad Tom Smith had taken up with the French faction of the French Eversole feud after his big fallout with the Davison family. However, we shall see that the theft of the watch and the horse would not be the only time that Smith would commit larceny in this feud. In today's video, we will briefly go over some of the murders that took place that Smith confessed to and the reasons behind them. Smith will also speak about how he got out of trouble in these courts and the burning of the Perry County Courthouse. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine! Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up that time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. Joe Hurt Hurt's murder is not often counted among the deaths of the French Eversold feud, but it is the first death that Smith does confess to. Smith and Hurt did know each other because they had worked for the Eversold faction at the same time. According to the sources, the Birmingham Age Herald, Birmingham, Alabama, April 21, 1895, and the Paul Tuckett Tribune, Paul Tuckett, Rhode Island, April 28, 1895, Quote, in 1887, he, being Tom Smith, decoyed Joe Hurt, a young man, to his house and shot him dead. No one saw him commit this crime but Hurt's wife and little children, and although an effort was made to bring him to justice, it proved abortive, unquote. According to the Daily Public Ledger, Maidsfield, Kentucky, June 29, 1895, quote, the first one was Joe Hurt. He came to my house above Hazard, and I shot him with a needle gun, unquote. This death helped Smith move up the ranks of the French faction. It would not take him long before he became the trusted member of the faction and would rise to be one of the lieutenants. Joseph C. Everso and Nick Combs While in our video concerning these two murders, do have the witness statements from those that were present at the time. In this section of the story, we have the perspective of one of those that took part in the ambush and their view of what happened. According to the Daily Ledger, Maysville, Kentucky, June 29, 1895, quote, Joe Atkins and I lit out for Joe Everso, and Joe shot him and Nick Combs. I shot at them as they fell and then robbed Everso's body of $30, unquote. According to the sources, Birmingham Age Herald and the Paul Tuckett Tribune, quote, on April 15th, 1888, Tom Smith, his brother Bill, Joe Atkins, and Elkanah Kernett learned that Joe Everso, the leader of the Everso faction, was to pass along a certain road that day, and they secreted themselves five miles from Hazard. The road leads from Hazard to Hayden, Kentucky. Their action was a result of a plan conceived of by the chief of the French faction and two or three of his trusted advisors. Without suspecting any danger, Joe Everso and a young man named Nicholas Combs approached the ambush. When they arrived opposite of the place of the concealment, three Winchesters and a shotgun belched forth and Joe Everso fell. Young Combs pitched over his horse's head, bleeding from three wounds. Tom Smith, springing from the bushes, was soon at the side of Combs. The boy had fainted, and believing him dead, Smith stooped over the body of Everso and rifled it. As he finished searching the pockets of Combs, the latter opened his eyes and said, quote, Oh, Tom, why did you do this awful deed? Unquote. For answer, Smith took aim at Combs' head. The boy who was dying looked at Smith in the face and in a weak voice pleaded, quote, Oh, Tom, Tom, don't shoot me any more, for I am killed and I am dying fast enough, unquote. Smith, with his pistol leveled, said, quote, Nick, I can't afford to leave any witnesses, unquote. As the last word was uttered, he pulled the trigger, and the bullet entered the boy's right temple and came through to the left temple. For this crime, he was tried before a magistrate, Zach Fugit, 
As the county judge, a brother of Joe Everso was afraid to hold court. The county attorney was also absent, and as Smith had spirited away the witnesses, Squire Fugit could do nothing but release him, unquote. We have covered more about what happened to the death of Nick Combs and John C. Everso in the French Everso feud. However, we do have from his own words that the story was given by Judge Combs and other witnesses do line up with what actually happened and who was responsible for the crime. Shade Combs Soon after the death of Everso and Nick Combs, John Campbell became the new leader of the Everso faction. It is thought that the reason for Combs' death was because he had asked for permission from John Campbell to start ambushing certain members of the French faction. The hunter soon became the hunted in a game of cat and mouse and Combs lost. According to the Roots website, while standing in his yard saddling his horse, Shay Combs was shot and killed surrounded by his children. Thomas Smith, along with several other accomplices, were arrested. However, he was never taken to trial and did not face any charges for the murder. Robin Cornett We have also covered this murder in our Appalachian Feud series. However, like before, we have this perspective of the person who pulled the trigger. According to the Daily Public Ledger, Maysville, Kentucky, June 29, 1895. Quote, Jack Combs and I killed Robert Cornell. It should be Robin Cornett next. He was cutting saw logs when we came upon him. I shot him first. We killed him because he belonged to the Eversoles, unquote. According to the sources, the Birmingham Age Herald and the Paul Tuckett Tribune, quote, several other friends of Eversoles were notified to leave the county or die. Among these was Robin Cornett, who lived just beyond hazard. He owned a very poor farm on which he was unable to make a living. On this account, he worked during the winter getting out logs. One day, while he was so engaged, and while in the sight of his own door, and surrounded by his four little boys, Tom Smith, Jesse Morgan, and Bob Prophet surrounded him and from the bush shot him to death. Smith was indicted for this crime, but evaded trial by having the case put out from the court to court and by forfeiting his bond, unquote. It seems that Smith used the court system of the time to his advantage to get out of the murder charges. Even though he was indicted, he would never face charges for this murder. The Battle for Hazard and the Death of John McKnight We have more of the Battle for Hazard, Kentucky in the French Eversold Feud section. However, this is from the perspective of Tom Smith and why he killed John McKnight. Quote, During the session of the Perry County Court in the fall of 1889, the French and Eversold factions met in the streets of Hazard. Henry Davison, one of the Frenchmen, and Wesley Whitaker, an Everso man, got into a dispute. Davison ran into Jesse Fields' house, from which safe retreat he fired on Whitaker. Then the fight became general. It was begun about 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, the second day of the court. James Davison went to Lots Creek, where the French was in waiting with plenty of men and ammunition, he having expected a battle. French men quickly marched into Hazard, arriving there at 1 o'clock Wednesday morning. Tom Smith and his brother Bill led the French forces. Their voices could be easily heard above the cracking of the Winchesters, their war cry being, quote, Hurrah for Fort Finch! He is our king, and we will follow him into hell, unquote. It is estimated that no fewer than 2,000 shots were fired in this fight. The French forces, with Tom Smith in the lead, held on till about 9 o'clock on Wednesday morning. After the fight was over, it was found that Jake McKnight and Ed Campbell had been killed. Campbell fell from a bullet from Joe Davison's gun, and McKnight was killed by Tom Smith. The French faction did not lose a man. For this 18-hour fight, all of the Everso and French people were indicted, and their trials, except for that of Smith, were removed to Winchester. Later, Smith's case was removed to Pineville, where he was tried, found guilty, 
and sentenced to the penitentiary for life. His cause was reversed by the Court of Appeals and the indictment was finally filed away, unquote. It seems that a man named Ed Campbell and his friends were having a wonderful time at a place named Graveyard Hill that overlooked downtown Hazard, Kentucky. They were drinking moonshine and having fun playing poker. Campbell decided to add to his fun by standing beside of a tree shooting his pistol. There was a store at the upper end of Hazard owned by Joe Davison. As soon as Davison heard the shots being fired, he looked out from the rear window of the store to see Campbell waving around his still smoking pistol in the air. Davison then grabbed his Winchester rifle, took aim, fired, and Campbell fell to the ground dead. As for John McKnight, there had been a huge battle in Hazard, Kentucky between the Eversole and French factions. The Eversoles had used the courthouse as a fort of safety and firing upon the French faction. This soon became a trap as Tom Smith and Jesse Fields went up on Graveyard Hill and set up a crossfire. Before dawn, John McKnight and another man attempted to cross the street for safety. Tom Smith opened fire upon them. McKnight died instantly. According to the Daily Public Ledger, Maysville, Kentucky, June 29, 1895. Quote, John McKnight was the next man I killed. I shot him in the fight at Hazard. Bob Brothers was also shooting at him at the time, and it may have been he that killed him, unquote. Ambrose Ambergy According to the sources, Birmingham H. Herald and the Pawtucket Tribune, quote, After killing Combs, Smith continued bushwhacking friends of Everso. He and his brother Bill secreted themselves in a cellar of a house in Hyman, the county seat of Knott County, and in broad daylight assassinated Ambrose Ambergy. This crime occurred in 1889, unquote. There is not a lot of information about this murder other than Tom and Bill Smith were in the cellar when they ambushed Ambrose Ambergy in broad daylight. Ambergy was a part of the ever so faction in the feud. The Burning of the Courthouse According to the same sources, quote, In the latter part of that year, everything was quiet in Perry County, and the French having removed to Winchester, Kentucky, the grand jury returned several indictments against Smith for his crimes. This alarmed the murderer, and in gathering a crowd of his friends, he visited Hazard one dark night and set fire to the Perry County Courthouse. All the indictments and court records were destroyed except some documents that were saved by Coleman Reed of Mount Sterling. By threats and by spiriting away witnesses, Smith once more evaded the law. After the courthouse was burned, a reign of terror prevailed in Perry County. Men who had denounced his crimes left the county, unquote. This was a dangerous time to be in the area if you were on one side of the feud or the other. On July 4th, 1890, the French faction was not about to face charges of the feud. So on that fateful night, incineraries were used to bring down the bastion of justice in the mountains. Most of the records were saved from the utter destruction of the explosion and fire. However, all of Tom Smith's official records were destroyed. The court would not be deterred and began holding court sessions under a tent and called it blanket court and indicted men would face their charges in Winchester, Kentucky. We will continue next week with the plot to kill Judge Josiah Combs and the murder of Doc Rader and how Tom Smith would confess to everything and place the finger of blame upon Benjamin French. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Outlaws. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.